What's up everybody? It's One Cast One Fish and today I'm bringing you the video that we've all been waiting for. Today I'm going to be using my Garmin Striker 4 Fish Finder to bring you one of the most important yet confusing lessons for interpreting what you see on your sonar screen. Now this video is packed with three great lessons to help you better interpret what you see on your fish finder screen. First, we're going to discuss how a transducer works. Second, we're going to talk about why when you see a fish on your fish finder screen, it shows up as that arch. And third, we're going to learn how to use our fish finder screen to help us determine the location of the fish around our boat. If you have not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified the next time there's a one cast one fish video available on YouTube. In this video, you're going to hear a lot of reference to sonar cone, which is essentially the area that your transducer is looking at and displaying the information back to your fish finder display screen. If you have not already, I would highly recommend before you begin this video, clicking on the link above and check out my video on sonar frequency, which goes in depth about the sonar cone and the cone angles. Now let's get into it. Your fish finder consists of two major parts, the transducer and the receiver. The transducer sends sound waves through the water column. Once those sound waves hit an object, the sound wave returns back to the transducer. That sound wave data is then processed by the receiver unit and converted into the image you see on your fish finder screen. Now we're going to look at why fish show up as arches on your fish finder. Now I want to point out one important thing that's going to become the basis for why fish show up as an arch on your fish finder screen. As you can see, as our sonar sound wave travels through the water column, the lines at the extremities are longer than those in the center. What this illustrates is that further out in our sonar cone, not only does it take longer for our sound wave to get to its target, it also takes longer to return back to the transducer from its target. Alright, now let's see what things look like when we introduce a fish into the transducer cone. As the fish begins to enter the outermost regions of our sonar cone, our sound waves will start to bounce off of the fish, return to our transducer, which in turn will send the data to our receiver to process, and create an image for us to see. As the fish continues to move through the transducer cone, the common image of a fish arch begins to appear. As the fish makes its way out of the transducer cone, we get the trailing edge of the fish arch. Now let's take a look why those fish show up as an arch on our screen. As you can see from the illustration, our sonar's cone of view is three-dimensional. However, our fish finder receiver is taking that three-dimensional data and converting it to a two-dimensional image. All right, we're going to take a brief rewind and go back over one of the key concepts of why fish show up as arches on our fish finder screen. As you can see, as our sonar sound wave travels through the water column, the lines at the extremities are longer than those in the center. What this illustrates is that further out in our sonar cone, not only does it take longer for our sound wave to get to its target, it also takes longer to return back to the transducer from its target. Now as the fish starts to enter the outer regions of our sonar cone, the sound wave comes in contact with the target. The amount of time for that sound wave to hit our target and return back to our transducer is used to represent a specific depth of the target at that exact time. Now as the fish moves into the center of our cone, directly underneath the transducer, you'll notice that the time for our sound wave to reach our target is shortened, which means the time for the information to return back to the transducer is also shorter. This information is also collected by the receiver and used to show the depth of the target at that exact time. Now as our fish begins to move out of the cone, our sound wave once again is taking longer to get to the target and return to the transducer. And again, our receiver is taking this data and information and using it to calculate an exact depth of that target at that exact time. The following illustration will help bring home the concept of how that sonar sound wave timing to and from the target plays a vital role in our actual fish arch we see on our screen. Since our receiver is using the sound wave's timing to calculate the depth of an object, Objects in the furthest reaches of the sonar cone will appear slightly deeper in the water column. This is due to the increased time it takes for the sound wave to return at the outer reaches of our sonar cone. As the object moves directly under the transducer, the sound wave time is shorter and the object will actually appear higher in the water column. The fish arch we see is the many data points processed by our fish finder throughout the object's entire motion through our transducer cone. 
Now we're going to put everything together using actual footage from the Garmin Striker 4 fish finder. In this short clip you'll see two fish make their way through the transducer cone and how that correlates to what we see on our fish finder screen. Now the final thing I want to cover is how to interpret your sonar display to determine where those fish are in relation to your transducer cone and your boat. One thing I want to point out is our fish finder's display moves from right to left. That means everything we see on the right hand side of the screen is new fresh data or everything on the left is in the past or history. Now if you look here on the right hand side of the screen you'll see our first fish is starting to enter the transducer cone. Now you'll see that our first fish is directly beneath the transducer. Now at this point the second fish is actually starting to enter the transducer cone while the first fish is beginning to make its exit. Now our second fish is directly beneath the transducer and the first fish is now out of the transducer cone. What's important to take note here is the first fish is outside the transducer cone. That means this fish is no longer within the transducer cone underneath our boat. It's somewhere outside of that zone. At this point you'll see our second fish is beginning to exit the transducer cone as well. And at this point you'll see our second fish has completely exited the transducer cone. It's at this point that neither fish is now within the cone of our transducer. What this means is that even though the fish are still showing up on our sonar screen, the fish are no longer within the radius underneath the boat that's covered by the transducer cone. The fish are located somewhere outside of that cone now. I hope this video shed some light on why fish show up as arches on your fish finder screen. Now be sure to check out some more One Cast One Fish videos dealing with the Garmin Striker 4 and other fish finder tutorials, which will help you better understand what's going on in the water under your boat. Now again, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification, and we'll see you next time on the water.